For the first time ever, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah is threatening the country of Cyprus with war. Does this mean that war with Lebanon could turn into a wider scale conflict? We're going to be getting into that and a whole lot more here on today's show, so stay tuned. I'm Justin, and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Before we jump into the latest news with Lebanon, unfortunately, an elderly Israeli man was killed in a terrorist attack, or it looked like some sort of uh, attack, whether it was terror-related or not, um, uh, near the city, the Palestinian city of Kalkilia. First, he was robbed of his car, and then he was left on the side of the road, and he was found. Uh, he was uh, originally treated, but then he was unfortunately died later. Pray for his family. Pray for comfort. Pray that there would be no more uh, terrorism here in the land of Israel. So Lebanon or Hezbollah, which is in control of Lebanon, basically, is now threatening the country of Cyprus. Uh, this is for the first time ever. As you guys know, war with uh, full out war with is. Um, Imminent could happen any day with Hezbollah. Ben talked about on a, on his show the other day, um, but for the first time ever, the, this is a first. This hasn't happened before, and this is kind of crazy because it could um, potentially change things on a regional scale, on a Middle East scale. So the leader of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, he threatened the island of Cyprus. He did a statement or an address on television. Uh, he started out, or he, he said, an invasion of the Galilee remains on the table if the confrontation escalates. Um, Hezbollah joined the war on October 8th. They started, uh, they've been firing rockets, they've been firing missiles, they've been doing different attacks. In northern Israel, there are tens of thousands of Israelis who are currently um, evacuated from their homes on northern Israel, and they're living in shelters and different places all over Israel. So there has been a war with um, uh, Hezbollah since October 8th. However, the ID and the IDF has, they've been responding with somewhat strength. They've been going and doing like very precise uh, strikes and uh, stuff on different terror targets and different terror leaders, but they haven't actually invaded uh, Lebanon yet. Nasrallah, uh, Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, said Cyprus would be considered, quote, a part of the war if the president of Cyprus continued to allow Israel to use its airports and bases for military exercises. He said, quote, opening Cypriot airports and bases to the Israeli enemy to target Lebanon would mean that the Cypriot government is part of the war and the resistance will deal with it as part of the war. Uh, the president of Cyprus, Nikos Christodoulides, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, he responded to Nasrallah's threat. He said, quote, these statements um, do not ref reflect reality. Cyprus remains uninvolved in any military conflict and positions itself as part of the solution, um, not as a problem. He also added that, quote, our humanitarian corridor is evidence of our commitment to peace and stability. Uh, they have a humanitarian corridor from the port of Lar Larnaca in Cyprus where ships can, um, different international ships and stuff can, uh, they have like a humanitarian corridor going straight to Gaza to bring humanitarian supplies um, into Gaza. So that's what he's talking about here. Um, this is um, really interesting stuff. He, he Hassan Nasrallah really is, I feel like he's messing with fire. He's threatening not only Israel, but now he's threatening Cyprus, which is a tiny little island. But again, it's not just Israel he's threatening. Um, so this really could turn into a larger scale conflict, something um, not even sure what that would look like, but it could turn into a bigger um, Middle East uh, war. This is from JNS. Nasrallah warned that Israel should be fearful and that nowhere in Israel would be safe in the case of a wider war, which he said that Hezbollah is not seeking. You're not seeking a wider war. However, you're threatening countries um, in the Middle East. Uh, explain that one to me. He said with the, um, the terror army, his army of Hezbollah would be fighting with no rules and no ceilings. Meanwhile, the IDF keeps striking Hezbollah positions. Uh, 
again, Ben talked about it on the show the other day, but um, the IDF was given the green light to begin operational activities inside of Hezbollah, I mean, inside of Lebanon, excuse me, against Hezbollah. Um, but in the meantime, while all of this is going on, the, I, the IDF, the Israeli Air Force, has been doing precise strikes on different uh, positions and terror targets. Yesterday, they eliminated the Hezbollah operations commander, Fadel Ibrahim. This guy was responsible for planning and carrying out uh, terror attacks against Israel and commanding Hezbollah ground forces in the area of Ju'aya. He was taken out in a very precise um, strike from the Air Force. Guys, Israel's defense minister is warning, um, as I've been talking about, he's warning that this war with Lebanon could turn into a, a broader conflict. He's saying it could be that this war will be on a different scale. Uh, we're going to get into all that. But first, since October 7th, over 600 brave IDF soldiers have given their lives to defend Israel from the evil forces of Hamas and Hezbollah. Their families are devastated, their wives are now widows, and their children are orphans. Hadass Lowenstern is one such widow whose husband, Elisha, was killed in battle, leaving her to raise their six children under the age of 13, including a baby all by herself. Neora Swede is another widow whose husband, Behor, died while heroically fighting terrorists with his bare hands near Gaza. Neora must now raise their three beautiful young daughters on her own. These incredibly brave widows have lost everything. Their husbands made the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of the Jewish nation. As they grieve, they're also scrambling to make ends meet without their husband, father, and provider. Guys, we cannot abandon them. Their husbands died to protect Israel and the free world from brutal acts of terrorism. Now, we have the opportunity to do our part in making sure these widows and orphans are taken care of. Every dollar raised pays for critical expenses like food, utilities, and clothing. Click the link in the description below to give generously to this campaign that is dedicated to caring for the heroic widows and orphans of the fallen soldiers of the IDF. Guys, let's make a difference today by donating to care for widows and orphans of IDF soldiers who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant held a situational assessment with IDF Chief of Staff uh, Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi at the military's Northern Command. Um, he warned that this war could be, most likely will be on a different scale. He said, quote, we are achieving readiness on land and in the air, strengthening our intelligence systems and preparing for every scenario. We must all remember that Hezbollah started a war against us on October 8th, a day after Hamas uh, attacked Israel, and since then it has not stopped. We have an obligation to change the situation in the north and to ensure the safe return of our citizens to their homes, and we will find a way to achieve this. It's true. This is... Um, this is a lot bigger deal than Hamas. We've been saying it before, but the manpower, just the technologies of uh, Hezbollah is much, much greater than um, Hamas because it's a lot easier for their head or their chief, Iran, it's a lot easier for them to send weapons directly into Lebanon to fund Hezbollah. It's a lot easier to do that than to send um uh to then to send arms and munitions into gaza which they have they've uh sent a lot into gaza but israel has been uh keeping a pretty strong grip on it so they um so the, the the their access to weapons has been restricted a little bit they've been bringing in through tunnels and stuff from egypt which we've talked about before um but sending weapons into lebanon is much much easier um because they can just send it straight into uh, the country there. Um, really, we'll see. I, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I, I believe war, war is going to break out very soon. Uh, could be in the next couple of days. Could be in the next couple of weeks. Could be months. Who knows? Um, one thing is for sure. We need to keep Israel in our prayers. As I said, this war with Hezbollah, it's a lot bigger deal than um, what they've been facing um, against Hamas in Gaza. So... Pray for Israel. Pray that they'll have the strength, the wisdom to know what to do, what to do, and what decisions to make. Um, yeah, with this war, guys. For the end of the show, I want to honor a hero 
in Israel. The IDF's oldest reservist, Ezra Yachin, he's 96 years old. He was just promoted to command sergeant major in a special IDF ceremony. Um, this guy's a legend in Israel. He was uh, originally part of the like some of the first resistance in Israel against the British leading up to 1948 and then actually fighting in 1948. We've had him. He's spoken to some of our volunteer groups. Absolutely amazing legend of a guy. He's crazy stories. Um, so I thought that was really special that he was honored by the IDF that as the oldest reservist in the IDF, 96 years old. Uh, this is from Jewish Breaking News. At the promotion ceremony, it was highlighted that Yachin's speeches instilled the ancient warrior spirit in soldiers. He closely monitors current events and felt the war coming before it started. Officially recruited shortly after the war began, Yachin sees himself as a lifelong soldier for Israel, declaring, only death releases me from service. Guys, if that's not inspiring, I'm not sure what is. I thought that was incredible. Um, awesome way to... Um, to fight for your country, but not only do that, but to instill, as I said, to instill the warrior spirit in the young soldiers of the IDF. Guys, we're giving away shirts. We're giving away books. We're giving away leather patch hat, uh, incredible I Am Israel photo book, all of this amazing Israel guys merch. All you have to do to win this merch is to click the link in the description below, put your email in, sign up for our email list, and you are entered uh, into our raffle to win this incredible march up to $250 worth. We're going to be picking the winner pretty soon here at the end of June. So don't miss out on this opportunity. Click the link in the description below. Join our email list and have a chance to win this incredible Israel Guys merch. Guys, don't forget to donate to help the widows of the brave soldiers who have fallen in Gaza. Don't forget to subscribe. Get that conversation going down below. Let me know where you're watching from, where you're listening from. Uh, really, really appreciate the support. I really appreciate the comments that you guys put um, down below. As always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.